In this segment, I'd like to talk a little bit about microultrasonics. This is a term that was coined in 1992 by myself and one of my really great friends, Peggy Hawkins, a hygienist that I used to work with. Um, it's a generic term. It identifies the refined use of powered instrumentation compared to standard practices where technique was not emphasized, little training was provided, and the use was for high-powered super gingival gross debridement. Currently, there are schools that are teaching um, and emphasizing this type of technique, although in many schools still little training is provided. Microultrasonics is ul ultrasonic instrumentation that's small, the size of a perio probe. It's for supra and subgingival treatment. We use this from low to high power and oftentimes we can accomplish this with less to no water spray because we're doing what's called frequency modulation or manual tuning. And there's another video that talks about manual tuning. We use little or no hand instruments. I haven't used hand instruments as um, for over 15 years. So why use ultrasonics? Well, let's look at the American Academy of Periodontology position paper on sonic and ultrasonic scalers. They compare power-driven versus manual scalers and find that the clinical outcomes are similar. Plaque removal is similar. Calculus removal suggests less root damage with appropriately used power-driven scalers. That's less root damage. The endotoxin removal is similar between the two modalities. Cementum removal is not recommended for periodontal debridement. It's not necessary. The access to frications, power-driven, are the instruments of choice. Pocket penetration, power-driven, better access to the base of the pocket. After all, these instruments are a lot smaller, and they're probe-like. Root surface alterations are inconclusive, and wound healing is similar. And this is from the AAP position paper. Cementum removal, I'll re-emphasize, is not recommended for periodontal debridement. Therefore, we shouldn't really be using um, sharp instruments. We should just be scaling with ultrasonics. Microultrasonics versus hand instruments. Well, we're doing we're using 0.2 to 0.6 millimeter tips versus 0.75 to 1.5 millimeter blades. These tips are moving at ultrasonic frequencies. Hand instruments are static. Ultrasonics are 360 degree active. Hand instruments have limited active sides, either one or two. There's lavage with ultrasonics. There's no lavage with hand instruments. And you do primarily scaling with ultrasonics and hand instruments do scaling and planing. Hand instruments are not so much fun, but microultrasonics are much more fun. I've tried a lot of different ultrasonic machines and I've come down to using primarily one type. We use 25K magnetostrictive manually tuned microultrasonics. We use the all metal inserts. As you see depicted here. When we talk about the range of power or the capacity to exert force with ultrasonics, um, automatic tuning tends to keep you in this higher power range and you just can't get to the low power range like you can with manual tuning. They all create hard vibrations, but when you can manually tune, you can get to much softer vibrations. Automatic tuning always tends to give you some water spray, whereas manual tuning can get you to the point where you're, you have no water spray. Let's talk about the difference between piezo technology and magnetostrictive technology. 
The advantage of the piezos is they tend to have larger hand pieces and although you would think that this is more ergonomic, there may be some disadvantages with larger hand pieces, especially in the posterior aspect of the mouth. They tend to be lighter. There's no water needed for cooling, but the water is still needed for lavage. And piezo has a Z in it, and anything with a Z is supposed to be better. The disadvantages are they have screw-in tips, and they're not recyclable. The mul and multiple hand pieces are needed to avoid screwing in the tips if you have different shapes. There's a linear movement with the straight tips that I find to be a disadvantage because you have to adapt the instrument kind of like a scaler. And it comes in automatically tuned versions only. It tends to be more expensive, maybe because there's a Z in the name. And there tends to be more discomfort with piezo technology than with magnetostrictive. Now magnetostrictive technology, the advantages are you can pop in and out the inserts and that's really simple when you want to change the insert. The inserts swivel and they rotate so you can move them and um, swivel them around based upon where you are in the mouth so that you can minimize the, the torque on your hand from the cord on the handpiece. You have manual tuning that's available. And any instrument can be made magnetostrictive. The original um, ultrasonic instruments were just hand instruments made magnetostrictive. The elliptical tip movement, I feel, gives you better power distribution all the way around the tip of the insert and the inserts are recyclable. There's heat production from the magnetostrictive metal stack and it warms the water which I think is a nice thing for patients. And it's more affordable than piezo. Also widely used in the US and it's typically referred a lot of times magnetostrictive technology is referred to as cavitron-like technology. The disadvantages. Many of the automatic tune machines are overpowered. They just don't go very low. Auto-tuning creates more water spray, so it tends to be more messy. Inadequate water flow can produce excessive heat. Manual tuning is not as easily understood as automatic tuning. And one of the videos that we have available is a video on manual tuning. And there's no Z in the name? Well, I don't know. Is that a disadvantage? The 25K all metal inserts with external water cooling tubing are what we use. They are recyclable. I feel like 25K has more wobble, so it cleans faster. That's just my impression. We use the Rizzo um, inserts, and they have a low profile water cooling tubing. and um, that's depicted here. Some of the water cooling tubing does have a bigger um, arc to it. Um, it's spring metal. It springs back. Um, these inserts tend to last a long time, six to nine months of heavy use. Um, the tubing sometimes is a, is a hassle because it gets unscrewed and you just you have to screw it back. Um, the sleeves um, need to stay in alignment. The O-rings, we, we actually replace our O-rings and make them a little bit bigger because we don't want them to rotate as much when we're doing the scope because we're pushing a little harder and we don't want it to spin. Um, USI is a company that makes um, smaller diameters down to 0.2 millimeters. They're a little more expensive um, and they can be recycled by the USI company. We buy our inserts from the Rizzo company, and they're also the Rizzo company also aftermarket makes them for the Hartzell company. What do you do with the right and the left versions? What we do is we bend them like a frication probe, 
and that allows us better access to certain areas like the distal of furcations and the um, the concavities at the distal of molars.